Leafeon is chilling at like zero usage competitively, and while it's not the most loved evolution, it definitely has some potential in the sun. It can hit decently hard with base 110 attack, stay bulky at 130 defense, and with Sunny Day active, it's extremely fast with that chlorophyll ability. We make this bad boy sharp with some Swords Dance to double our attack, and 125 power Solar Blades now hit super hard. The Mirror Herb item can work well to copy opposing stat changes, and coverage with knockoff, along with things like Fire Terror Blast for its defensive counters, is solid. I like Leafeon, and I think it's just fun, so we put him to the test. Alright, all I'm saying is, Leafeon would be way more popular if they made the shiny variant like an autumn theme. They had the opportunity, and they didn't take it, so hire me Game Freak, for real. But regardless, we're gonna go ahead and show Leafy on some love today, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so today the main goal is to give everybody sunburns. We're working with the power of the sun, and my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Persian. So, Persian as a lead is interesting, I imagine it's probably just gonna fake out and then do something like a parting shot, and then just be mildly annoying. It does go for the fake out here as I just lead off with the Swampert, basically as a, a nice little stealth rock lead to also be able to get a flip turn action going. So, Fake Out doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but does kind of tell us what they're working with with this bad boy. And I figured I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get these rocks up however, however I can. So they actually end up going for a Chilling Water. And Persian with Technician paired with Chilling Water does get the boost. It's actually kind of interesting. It does give you a minus one to attack. While it's not super strong, especially on like a bulky Swampert, I mess with the vision. This thing does get access to a good amount of boosted moves from Technician, Chilling Water being one of the new ones. And uh, I figure, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip turn out of here. I was thinking I was gonna Earthquake, but now they're just continuing to throw buckets of cold water at my face. And for whatever reason, that makes it so I don't attack so hard. So I just go for the flip turn here and get the thing a little bit wet, pause. And now I can just choose to go into whatever we like. So of course, in order to get this team rolling, we need some sun. And for whatever reason also, Ninetales can just summon that. So I'm gonna bring in the Firefox here, looking badass. And that drought is gonna stay up for that eight turns because of the heat rock. So I, while I do want to try to get something else in here, I kind of just figured I should probably go for a nice little Fire Blast. There's not a lot that wants to switch into that, especially boosted by that sun. And as this thing goes for the Snarl, it actually <laughs> drops my special attack just enough to where it can live on one HP. This thing is hanging on by a damn threat over here, and we knew this thing was gonna be annoying. So now this allows them to then go for the Power Gem. Luckily, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And then I can just finish this thing off with a nice little Solar Beam. I don't wanna miss you know, the, uh, the Fire Blast here, and Solar Beam kind of covers for switches potentially if they wanna save that, but then they'd have to get rid of Rock. So they decide to just let the Persian go down, and I am totally fine with that. So the clock is ticking on the sun turns here. And as they bring in a Palafin, obviously this thing's not going to be as effective with the sun up, just weakening the water moves. So the good news is this thing probably has to just switch out. And the bad news is it's going to come back as a damn superhero. So I figured they probably just go for the flip turn here. And I decided to go into the Grafai Eye. Now, Finger Paint has a, a very important role on the squad. And that is just to kind of mix stuff up a bit and give me some positioning. So... As they go for that flip turn like we expect, it does pop my balloon, which is fucked up because that was my birthday balloon and now you just popped it for no reason at all. And this is going to allow the switch into Gliscor. So I was kind of reluctant to go into the Grafaii to get that balloon popped just because of Gliscor because now I'm weak to that earthquake. But as the Gliscor comes in, it is obviously going to get that toxic orb. And now I have a decision to make. So I decide I'm going to go for the parting shot. I want to try to get a nice little pivot here in the process, knocking down that attack one stage. And I kind of figure, you know, if I'm this Gliscor, I'm probably going for a Swords Dance. So I'm going to try to pull out a little bit of shenanigans here. And also, a good middle ground play is to go into the Leafeon. That's just because, you know, if they do want to Earthquake, I, I'm fine with that. But also, if they Swords Dance, we get a little bit of uh, Mirror Herb action. So I'm going to bring in the boy Herbert. And they do, in fact, go for the Swords Dance, which is perfect. Because while I myself am a sharp leaf, I, it's way easier if I can just steal your Swords Dance. So I get that Mirror Herb to activate. This thing's got to be one of the most fun new items that they introduced in this generation. That along with things like the uh, uh, Loaded Dice. There's some fire options there. So I now just decide to go for that Solar Blade. I'm in the sun. I'm obviously faster. And we're looking to slice some heads off with his own sword. So I can just go for the freaking lightsaber-ass Solar Blade. And of course, this thing does in fact live on literally 2 HP, which is annoying. However, as they do have the coverage with the Poison Jab, for whatever reason, I actually can live. And that's just because 
That thing's only sitting at plus one thanks to that parting shot, which allows me to live that. And now I can just outspeed and finish that thing off with a knockoff. Just basically to be like, hey, get that damn toxic orb out of here. Ice is the most annoying thing ever. And now your orb's on the ground, so that's it feels good. So Leafeon is in a pretty damn good position here. We do have a couple turns left of the sun. I have that swords dance. And also, most importantly, I'm just a little guy. So now they decide to bring in Doug Dimmodome, the owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. And the Galarian Weezing is in a position here where after they set up that Misty Surge, it's feeling like uh, this thing can live any attack I can throw at it. Except for one, and that is for going with the, uh, the nice little Terra Fire play. If so sometimes you gotta turn, you gotta just light the leaves on fire, and then this thing turns way scarier. God, I wish there was a fire type evolution. But I'm gonna go for the Terra Fire here. And uh, the good news, so the reason why we do this is just because now Terra Blast is not only going to be stabbed, but also boosted by that sun. And depending on if this thing's max defense, it could probably take one. I'm gonna roll the dice here just because why the hell not? I'm set up. I go for that Terra Blast, and that just straight up takes care of the Galarian Weezing, which feels amazing. And Leafeon is just out here taking name. We generally reserve that for Steel types, but hey, we'll take it in this situation. So. Important to note, the sun does go away, and that's kind of the downfall of our little leafy buddy here, because now, especially, the freaking Palafin gets to come in, and not only is it now super effective on me, it also has the um, freaking Misty Seed, which actually now, touching that terrain, gives it the special defense boost. So, this thing is now a damn superhero, looking pretty confident over there, but I still feel like Leafeon can actually put in some good work here. And I'm thinking I can probably try to make some quick work of it. So I decide actually just to go right into Ninetales, which is kind of an aggressive play, but doing this against the Palafin is nice, just because as I come in, I get that Drought to activate, and the uh, Jet Punch is just going to straight take me out. However, now that leaves me with plenty of turns to get my Chlorophyll Rock in here. So, knowing that they did have the priority in the Jet Punch, obviously Leafeon isn't a great option here, but I also have one of the scariest damn Mons in the game, and that is the homegirl Sunflora. I come in looking like a damn menace, about to tear some shit up. And I can outspeed here, and obviously a jet punch isn't going to be helpful for him. So I decide to just go right for that solar beam. Keep in mind they did have that special defensive boost. Uh, but I'm feeling like Sunflora is such a beast that it actually just straight up takes care of it regardless. And that is extremely satisfying. Anytime Sunflora does anything... I feel like it's a win in my book. Also, if you want to see some sweet, more Sunflora action, you should go watch my Sunflora video, because this thing can be a menace, even though it's pretty bad. So, Buddy is, in fact, running out of options, and he has two Pokemon left. First, they go into the Phylinx here, looking like a pack of Milk Duds, and in the back, they have a Tentacruel. So, I figure I'm just going to go ahead and attack here, but then I realize, yeah, this thing does, in fact, have first impression. I kind of forget that, and I consider me impressed in a first fashion. So Sunflower goes down, but that is mostly fine because what I can do is just go into secondary Chlorophyll Fella, and honestly, Leafeon's Solar Blade looks pretty solid here. As long as this thing doesn't have crazy boosts, I'm in a pretty good spot, which this thing can do with its no retreat. Phalanx is just a weird little dude. I, I kind of love this thing. So I'm just going to go for that Solar Blade just for some nice stab damage here. And obviously, it, it, can't, it can't first impression unless they want to switch out and back in. So I feel like this was a good play. They decide then to go for the Terra Steel. Going to put the axe on the, uh, the leader's head. And Steel type is kind of a risky maneuver because now it does resist the Solar Blade. And they have the option to either take me out here or try to get something going with this. And being down to two mons, I feel like they're probably going to try to make the most of it. So, as the Solar Blade comes through, they do in fact decide to go for the No Retreat. Bust out the Tiki Torches, and we're getting we're getting crazy with it. This is going to give it a plus one to every single stat, and that just basically makes it so that it can't switch out, which is um, interesting. So I imagine they probably just have some fighting coverage back there, and this thing is kind of relying on the fact that potentially now, with that special defense, or uh, physical defense boost, it can take a Terror Blast. However, in the sun, I'm Terra Fire. Leafeon, I will take a bite out of this thing's face if it can't kill this. And it does, in fact, just go ahead and blast his ass with the, uh, the Terra Fire Blast. So that takes care of the Phalanx. And at this point, Leafeon is going crazy. This thing is actually super fun. I got my Crystal Tail just flickering around in the wind. And the final one being the Tentacruel, not super worried about because I can hit this thing on the physical side with that Stab Solar Blade, and it probably does not want to deal with that. They decide to go ahead and spare this thing's life, and they're just going to go ahead and run. But that's going to do it for game number one because yeah, Leafeon absolutely did it to him. And uh, I thought that was just a kind of a fun game. And that also is now going to bring us 
into game number two because we got some more sun action. Don't do not consider taking that sunscreen off because it is still in fact going to be pretty hot out here. Now important to note, my opponent does have a very scary team over here and definitely some answers to what I'm working with. So this turns out to be a really good one and let's jump into it. All right, so this time my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Meowskarada, which turns out to be a pretty good idea because that is in fact my arch nemesis. I am straight up allergic to grass as a Swampert, and that is not ideal because as a lead off of that thing, I now have to switch just kind of directly into the Ninetales, which kind of should be fine because I figure they probably just pivot, and then it's like, hey, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and make it real bright inside this, uh, this cafe here. So as we do get the drought up, they actually end up going for the flower trick, which is honestly perfect. I kind of, uh, I prefer that because now they don't have the kind of switch initiative into bringing something in versus the Ninetales. And I know that uh, I can take anything barring a knockoff here. Now I figure I'm going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. You go ahead and cut this thing's attack in half, then I can live a knockoff. However, I will miss because has Will-O-Wisp ever landed? I don't think it has. If anybody has recorded evidence of Will-O-Wisp not missing, go ahead and pass me that. So. A knockoff takes care of the Ninetales, and now I'm immediately kind of put on the back foot with this squad because there goes my main Sunsetter. And I figure it's kind of time to just start getting some Sun shenanigans going because this is kind of all I got other than my secondary Setter, which is the Grafai Eye. So, as I go into the Sunflower here, I'm just going to go right for the Weather Ball. And Buddy did not see that coming because I just throw the balls right, his, right at his face. Pause. And that just takes care of it. Fire-type Weather Ball in the Sun honestly hits way harder than people expect. So... That is now going to draw in a Volcarona, and as much as I wanted to stay in and go for an attack here, I figure, you know what, this thing probably, if they have the Terra, they're going to commit it on this thing, and I am not, I just, I want to conserve the Sunflora just in case. So instead, I decide to go into the Grafai, because that covers for a few options here. Either they go for a defensive Terra, which they are actually going to do, and completely break my game. I just zooms in on the door for some reason here. I don't know. But also, if they go for the Quiver Dance, I have myself an answer here, and... Yeah, the, it does eventually unbreak here. I've never seen this before. My game has been extremely buggy. There's a lot of times where, like, it doesn't even show the move animations and shit. I don't know what's going on with this game, but... <laughs> Regardless, they do go for the Quiver Dance, and that's the reason why I switch into Grafia here. And that's because this thing is, again, one of the greatest insurance policies against setup. Because I can just go right for the Prankster Encore, meaning I'm able to go with priority. And I can be like, hey, continue to do that for me. Now, I could also... You just stay in here, go for poison jabs, and then as soon as the Encore wears off, just Encore it again. And Prankster Encore literally is one of the meanest things you can do to somebody in this game. It's actually, it's like being a bully. So, I figure, I'm, you know what, I'm going to try to take advantage of this. I go for the Parting Shot, which is going to cover for, potentially if they wanted to switch on that turn, then I would have the matchup. But also, them staying in tells me that, hey, they're going to click Quiver Dance again. And... I'm going to go ahead and try to get this Mirror Herb to activate for the second time today. Because I can just go right into the Leafeon here. And um, they do actually stay in, go for that Quiver Dance. Unfortunately, however, I'm not a special attacker. So I only really benefit from having the special defense boost along with the speed. But honestly, even just being at plus one speed is good. Because if I do run out of sun, then I'm still faster than everything. So I go ahead and mirror that. I get that Spadef and speed boost. And uh, this thing is still locked into Quiver Dance for another turn here. So... A good thing is I can get some good damage off here. Bad thing is my best damage comes in the form of knockoff. And they're actually just going to go ahead and switch out here, which is kind of fine by me because now something has to deal with the knockoff. And more than likely, I can get a two-hit KO here. So they decide to go into the Skarmory, who kind of, I mean, just looks like the natural predator of a Leafeon. Obviously, flying in steel is not ideal when you're just a little leafy fella. However, you already know the, dr the drill. I'm actually a Flareon in disguise. And uh, people think that they can be switching into Corviknights and Skarmories and Steel types in general. But I can assure you, you cannot. Because this is now going to allow me to go for that Terra Fire. And uh, I can then just Terra Fire Blast this thing into the damn Shadow Realm. Which feels good because Skarmory is always annoying. Whether it was here to set up spikes. Or be like an Iron Defense and Body Press. Or just generally just be an asshole. So, I absolutely blast that thing after getting rid of its helmet. That thing just got straight up bullied by a Leafeon. Bozo, and now sadly the sunlight does go away. So, with the sunlight faded, um, I do lose my chlorophyll, but also um, I'm still at plus one speed. So I know that I'm faster, and as they actually go into Glamora here, I'm looking at this thinking I could totally try to use 
this special defense boost I have. Because the best thing it can do to me is go for like a power gem. I know that I'm going to be faster if it's Focus Ash. That's going to be unfortunate. Um, but I just decided, you know what? I'm going to go for the Solar Blade, actually. Even without the Sun, I know that I can live in attack thanks to that Quiver Dance. I do just barely hang on to the power gem. And then I was hoping that I was going to just be able to bop it with this... Uh, this freaking solar blade, but they are gonna make the safe switch and just go right back into the Volcarona Which isn't really that safe because even just at Terra Fire I still do well over half with that And I think it was just kind of funny going for that solar blade without even having the Sun up I just wanted to see I, I thought I could live that and I did which was quite satisfying So at this point I could have gone for the knockoff, but I figured without a swords dance boost There's a chance that this thing lives that and Leafeon also could put in some work later on So I decided to switch back into the Grafii uh, it just seems like I, I'm a pretty decent counter to that Volcarona, especially being uh, invested in special defense on this thing. And they actually make a switch of their own, and they're going to go into the Glamora, which is annoying because this is a far worse matchup. And I decide, you know what, I, the sun went away. I'm just going to go ahead and set it right back up here. I know that I can at least also take one more attack from this thing. So they do go for the Power Gem here, which is going to not really do a whole lot of damage because, again, this Grafaii is built to be specially defensive. And now I can just go ahead and parting shot out of here and then get myself a nice little matchup that should be able to switch into this, especially at minus one special attack. So uh, I am going to part ways here. I just gave him the old deuces with my painted ass fingers. And now I have a couple options on what I could bring in here. I decided to go into Sunflora just because, listen, Sunflora is fun. I, I'm literally using the two weirdest sun sweepers on this team, but... Thinking that I could come in on a power gem, they actually end up going, or an earth power, they actually go for that stealth rock. Now that stealth rock play is actually really nice for them because now, Leafeon actually cannot come back in and take stealth rock chip and be able to live. So that kind of neutralizes Leafeon there. And now it's, uh, it's, it's time for the other Leafy fella to show the worth here. So they're actually gonna go ahead and switch into the Gardevoir who does have the chlorophyll ability now because he freaking traced me and that's actually, Kind of interesting. It's kind of cool because now this thing, I mean, it's cool for them, bad for me. Because this, with this thing having chlorophyll, it is definitely faster than my base 30 speed ass. And I am a little bit worried about that. So I'm just kind of looking at potential switch-ins here as either like a sack or who is kind of the least useful in the rest of the matchup here. So I decided to go into the Swampert. Um, I know that I should potentially be able to take two attacks, depending on kind of what this thing is wants to do or how it's built. And they are going to go for the Moonblast here, which does look like I can definitely take one more, which is actually perfect, because they don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with an Earthquake, especially with Skarmory being gone. And I'm kind of just free to start shaking the ground and absolutely ruining this cafe here. And I actually outsped there. I'm incredibly confused. I remember playing this, I was like, what the hell just happened there? That Gardevoir had Chlorophyll, and I don't even know if Gardevoir gets any negative priority moves. Surely it has to. Like, I don't know what he was just clicking there, but that thing just... <laughs> I outspat it with the Swampert. Am I confused there? That's what happened, right? What the hell? If anybody knows the deal with what went down there, I'm so confused. Regardless, <laughs> now they can go back into Volcarona, and I'm thinking this thing probably just goes for a, you know, a Giga Drain here, and it's kind of... It's kind of checkmate. It's like back is against the wall here not being able to click the quiver dance just because I can go right into Grafaya. And this is definitely my best option here. And they're actually just going to go for the bug bug, which is great because I am just a normal and poison little fella. And I take that super nicely. And now my main goal is to set back up the sun. Because while Leafeon is kind of out of commission thanks to those damn stealth rocks, which is annoying, Sunflora can make some shit happen for me. So I get up that sun and now they just decide to go for that fiery dance that is going to be boosted by the sun. And that is going to take care of the Grafaii. So both of my Sunsetters on the squad are taken care of. And I have to try to make the most happen with what I've got left. So I want to go into Leafeon, but again, Stealth Rock's going to kill me. So it looks like it is the absolute first person shooter freaking... Maybe, maybe it's full power Sunflower. Yeah, the frames per second as Sunflower comes in. And uh, I know that I can outspeed this thing, which is just kind of funny because... You wouldn't think that I could, but I definitely come in, I can earth power the guy, and that ground coverage actually comes in super handy on the sun floor, more than you would think. So that takes care of the Volcarona, also takes the um, takes the Terra with it, which is fantastic, and I take a little bit of life orb chip. So here's the situation. They are officially down to two Pokemon left. They have this Glamora who's at full, and they also have a full health Iron Hands in the back. So as they bring this thing in, I'm able to outspeed it so I can just go for an Earth Power, which is as weak as hell to, which should kill. But they actually just go for the Spiky Shield, I'm assuming just to burn a turn of the sun. Um, quite literally just burning up my damn sun out here, which is annoying, but 
Sunflower is unbothered, just bouncing around with my cool little leaves, looking like a badass. And now I still have a turn of sun, so I can outspeed, go for that earth power, and it is not Focus Sash, luckily, which that's able to take care of it. So, in this situation, now they are down to one Pokemon left. And I feel like Sunflower at least being able to get off an attack, get some solid chip, even if I go down, I do have some uh, threats in the form of the Slitherwing in the back to hopefully take care of it. So, Big George comes in, he's got his big ass palms, and it does get an attack boost from the booster energy, which is kind of fine by me. And even though I have the super effective hit on the Earth Power, a Stab Solar Beam is actually going to do a bit more damage here. Good news is we know it is not going to be Assault Vest, so I'm going to be able to get a pretty good chunk of damage here. Listen, Sunflower is doing her best, alright? That doesn't do... Well. I mean, it actually does more than you'd kind of expect, because this is the thickest damn thing ever. And uh, now it allows him to Drain Punch me, which is unfortunate, but while they, you know, do take me out, they don't get a whole lot of recovery, because Sunflower has no damn HP, and also I was kind of like half dead anyway, so... That is perfect, and as the sun is going to go away, it was one damn turn too early uh, for Slitherwing to get that booster energy, or the uh, yeah, Protosynthesis to activate. Uh, but it's fine, because I can go into this thing, and obviously I can outrun Fatboy over here, and Slitherwing is able to do it in, in adorable fashion. I am quite quick, and now all I have to do is just go ahead and beat the hell out of the guy. I feel like Iron Hands might be one of the most fun Pokemon to punch if I was... If I was a Slitherwing, I don't know, he just looks punchable. I don't know, it seems satisfying. That's going to take care of it regardless. And that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was a solid match. I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, we have the, like, literally the most amazing community here. And it's crazy that you guys like to watch me just mess around with these kind of just dumb teams. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. So again, thank you guys very much. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.